if you are not stacking sats and you're you know worrying and betting against the market and timing the market you're doing it all wrong just relax do a regular you know buy of bitcoin uh, with it being an hourly basis regular basis daily basis weekly basis it doesn't matter and uh, you know and that's why i'm really looking forward to with my next talk to, to with joss and uh, has mccook has mccook has been on my show several times but joss is a he's a great uh, entrepreneur he's um, he's got this new uh, platform in france stacking sats uh, eventually it's going to be translated in other languages but you can already uh, start stacking you know via sap account in the european union so we're going to go down the rabbit hole you know what it means stacking sats and auto dcaing uh, for the plaps, with the plaps, uh, and what does it mean versus you know the institutional uh, uh, FOMO that's going on right now with all the billions now flowing into Bitcoin. So without further ado, this is my talk with Joss and Hasma Cook. If you enjoyed this, please uh, give it a like, share, retweet, and give it a five-star review, please, on Apple Podcasts or iTunes if you love this episode, and have fun. Um, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the show. Joss, has me cook. How are you? How's it going? Good, good. Very thanks. Good. How are you? Welcome to the show. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a great, beautiful day outside. Um, it's becoming more and more sunny. So, Joss, um, you are the first time on my show. Um, I would love to. I just checked out your website. It looks so cool. Um, <laughs> so. Why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, and then we'll get to uh, Hess. Okay, so uh, I have uh, um, we have built uh, StackInsat, which is a DCA service in France and in a, I mean in French speaking uh, country uh, in Europe. Uh, so we can serve uh, Switzerland, the Belgium, France. Uh, I'm my background is. Uh, not related to finance or anything like this. I used to do uh, visual effects for movies. Uh, and I have a very uh, old friend of mine who is a very uh, good financial guy. He did uh, this, all these kind of studies and he did uh, a startup uh, about uh, investing. So he, he was like a robot advisor in France. And he's a very old friend of mine who sold his previous startup and... Uh, and I wanted to change uh, industry because I spent like 10 years in the movie industry and I had enough of it. So we uh, joined our force together to build this uh, auto DCA service in France. So that's a two minute introduction, I would say. And yeah, also we did the uh, Sofit Bitcoin as uh, a um, uh, French uh, conference uh, oriented, well, it was designed to speak about Bitcoin to a pre coiner, so to explain in a very uh, basic words. And uh, in an understandable way, uh, what Bitcoin is, and it was aimed also to um, to go against uh, mainstream media uh, talk about Bitcoin. You know, there, are, there are always a lot of bullshit, they say. So we try to uh, put another another talk about Bitcoin uh, dedicated to uh, newcomers. So that was the aim of something Bitcoin. That's amazing. So, who was the first uh, person to orange peel you, or you know, where you went a little bit deeper into the rabbit hole? Of mm, I would say it was internet. I was I, I was <laughs> red peeled by the the plebs. I would say, huh? but the the first person I I met in the, in this was uh, Francis Pulio in Montreal, uh, and then I get introduced, you know, all the meetup in uh, in Montreal with a very strong Bitcoin scene. So that's where I, I get my Bitcoin education, I would say, uh, from there. And uh, I came back in France in early 2019, and, um, and we uh, opened Stacking Sat early 2020. Great, great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I have a bunch of questions for you, Josh, but let's get a little bit back to, to Hess, Hess McCook, or, you know, Fry Hess, as you call them on, on Twitter. Um, you know what I've noticed uh, has I mean you've written like a bunch of uh, beautiful articles um, and you know uh, as you call it a lot you know uh, body of knowledge on all kinds of fads you know Bitcoin mining whatever but you don't get the credit for that why is that uh, it's look 
It's probably because I'm more interested in uh, in shit posting <laughs> than uh, than learning how to use uh, Hootsuite and uh, time uh, tweets to advertise my articles. So I kind of put them on there. I uh, I share them once they're written, and then I just kind of forget about them. Uh, leave them leave them as a body of knowledge. So uh, the thing is with the with the fryer title and the uh, fryer beard, uh, you can only truly become so religious about Bitcoin and about DCAing uh, once you've explored several different rabbit holes at uh, differing levels of depth, uh, no more so than the energy rabbit hole. Because uh, once you get your head around energy, you, you really understand how uh, beautiful and unstoppable uh, Bitcoin really is. No, it just it's just so amazing. I mean, how much how much how much you know content you've put out and and you know, I wish uh, other people who are you know writing articles or at least you know quoting or citing you, they you know, at least they would, you know, but they're not citing or quoting you. I mean, I'm just you know, it's just it's just not fair, I think, you know, to, oh, to not give you uh... credit for that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. It's you know, you're doing God's work here. So um has um and Joss you know, what I want to talk about is uh, I think there's this misconception and uh, or or a confusion, you know, amongst uh, the plebs or people, you know, who are uh, buying into Bitcoin on a regular basis. And however you, you know, you I was just, you know, privately, you know, talking to just before the recording um, that however you calculated it, um, people have always been better off if they, you know, didn't time the market or bet against the market and just, you know, relax. And, and it took me some time, you know, to, to get that. But um, do you want to uh, like uh, elaborate on that a little bit, either of you? Or... Yeah, I'll let, uh, I'll let Joss, because he's probably more intimate with the real world data that's coming uh, in on the auto DCA front. Please. Uh, uh, actually, for me, the numbers are not that important in when you DCA, because I mean, it's less risky to do this year because you, uh, you know, you, uh, you uh, average the volatility. Uh, so the thing is, if you put 10,000 bucks at a specific time, uh, if you're lucky, it can be uh, better for your return to put like 10,000 when you just time the perfect bottom instead of putting $10,000, you know, in a, in a hundred bucks increments every week. Uh, so you can have better return just with a one shot if you're very lucky and you time very well the market. DCA has uh, less return, but has less risk. So for me, numbers are not very important. What is very important is when you DCA, you just remove the headache of the price of when, you know, that uh, you cannot quantify it, you know, how much it removes. Uh, the headache and the stress and the emotion of when to improve on the time. So how do you price it compared to the better return to have invested on the better time? I don't know. I haven't run the number because you cannot quantify it. But the, the, the best thing about this year is just remove the stress, the pressure. You know that you have $10 every Monday are going to be converted into Bitcoin and you just do your stuff and you, all the brain juice you use to time the market and to look at the chart 24-7 just remove it do something useful with your brain juice and you know and you know that in a, a year or two or three you you have put this amount of money to convert into bitcoin and you're happy you know you just check your wallet every few months you say oh how many bitcoin i have you know how many uh, how many time i millionaire in satoshi and that's that's i think that's, that's better because you can uh, run all the calculation client ask us hey, is it better to invest on monday on thursday every week or every month I mean, on the long run, so, so, so the difference is so subtle. It, uh, for me, it doesn't work to calculate, look, I, you know, all this stuff. Look, I've uh, I have run the numbers, and I know you run a lot of is, numbers. <laughs> and uh, what you're saying is correct in that the difference between like daily and weekly, there's basically no difference. And depending on your luck, depending on what day of the week you started your weekly, some weeks, days to start might be better than others. Exactly. But anything longer than weekly, you tend to sit too much time out of the game. So if you've got a monthly DCA, all right, you get paid monthly. Uh, but if you only buy once a month, 
you are buying Bitcoin on only 12 of 365 days of the year. Yeah. So it's, it's not enough time like in the game. So buying 50 times a year, you know, once a week, probably better. Uh, if you want to be a psycho like me, uh, you know, a, a really small amounts, multiple times uh, daily. Uh, but like uh, I, even I have scaled back uh, to daily because uh, reporting has become, you know, too difficult. <laughs> if they're KYC coins, you know, if you, if you do, you know, three buys a day, your spreadsheet will have 2,000 lines in it at the end of the year uh, when you give it to the accountant. So find your balance. I think a weekly DCA is uh, like, is the sweet spot. Uh, uh, you know, weekly, daily, same thing. I like daily just so I can say that today I had more sats than yesterday. Yeah. And, uh, that, and for that, the person... Yeah, go on, Josh. Yeah, no, 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 finish. finish. I, I, I have a lot of and, stuff to uh, say. And, and even though, like, in a bull market, uh, DCA does return less, uh, on average, we're in a bear market for most of the time. It's probably 75% of the time we are in bear market and 25% of the time we are in bull market. Uh, but if you put in a lump sum on the 1st of January, uh, you're up 50% now, 45 grand. Uh, but if you've been buying every single day, like you're still up like 36, 37%. So you're not that far behind, you know, a lump sum, uh, especially because, you know, we tend to have quick rips and then, you know, a little bit of a slow drawdown. So you have time during the slow drawdown. Uh, what about uh, hourly? Buy? What about hourly? Is that, is that a strategy? I mean, there's a minimum probably threshold to buy, right? I mean, sorry, I didn't want to um, look interrupt you. Like, a, like probably, the, a, well, uh, the exchange I use in Australia, there is no minimum buy. Uh, or sorry, I think a Satoshi is a minimum buy. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're doing hourly, that's, you know, 24 times 365 lines in your spreadsheet. So you're going to be giving your accountant at the end of the year a spreadsheet with 70,000 lines. Okay. Of every discrete purchase, what its cost basis was, what time you purchased. So if, if you live in the Cayman Islands or somewhere where the government is completely off your back and you're allowed to trade and do whatever you do, buy one Satoshi a second, write a script, <laughs> uh, you know, like deltabadger.com allows you to do that. Uh, but in like a practical sense where you have to like, you know, log your purchases and it's KYC, like probably don't bother yourself with more than, you know, uh, daily. And again, depends on the structure of your exchange, the fee structure. Uh, so like, uh, you know, some exchanges, you know, have minimum orders. You have to buy a minimum of, of $10 for an order or $50 for an order. Uh, in that case, you might do weekly instead of daily. Uh, but if an exchange lets you buy a dollar's worth, it's probably better to buy, you know, a dollar a day than $30 a month because you're spending too much time like out of the game. Yeah. I want to hear Joss um, take on that, but let me just, I uh, had a thought. Um, first of all, Delta Badge, I use, I use that. I think I used the contingency up because there was a volume up to which, you know, you could do this for free. I mean, okay. I'm sure it's totally worth it. But then afterwards, um, I don't know what the maximum threshold is. Is it like 400, 500 euros or dollars? Look, look I think uh, Dennis uh, Ryman uh, made a script for Kraken. Oh, really? Yeah, like open source. Uh, it's on his GitHub and like is it, it's unlimited. Is it techy? But, like, do you have to like to, I mean, is it just a plug and play to download? I, and you just I, plug it? I think there might I, even be like some documentation on GitHub on like how to run it. But basically, okay. I think you just plug in your Kraken accounts like API key or link and you just get it to do what you need to do. It's very similar to Delta Badger, but it's, you know, obviously DIY. And I think it's only for Kraken. Because like that's just something he made for himself, uh, and he's open sourced. Cool, just uh, sorry, you do didn't, didn't want to interrupt you. So I mean the the frequency where when you buy it's it's also depend of how long you expose yourself to Bitcoin. If if you want to uh, to uh, expose yourself over like six months, yeah, maybe daily or weekly is better than monthly for sure. 
if on the long run, like three, four, five, ten years, uh, uh, weekly is still better to just get more uh, um, uh, to, to profit can, more you, the you, volatility. You, but this, uh, there is some technical aspect also uh, as well. So if you go on an exchange, it depends how long you want to keep your coins on the exchange before before you withdraw it, right? Yep. So let's say if you buy every second and you withdraw every second, you're gonna hit, you get hit by the withdraw fee a lot, right? Yep. And same if you do like a, uh, so us in stacking set, we just deliver straight to the um, to the wallet of our customers. Right? Uh huh. Yeah. So so in that so is, in that case, you'd probably want to stretch out your time a little more. Exactly. So it depends because you have uh, maybe it's better uh, performance wise to put ten bucks every Monday. You know, just to uh, to uh, catch more the volatility of Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, if you have, is it better to have fifty two UTXOs? You know, of ten bucks or uh, only twelve UTXOs or 40, 40 bucks equivalent of Bitcoin at the time you buy it. Because at yep, the end def- of the day, at some point you have to consider your UTXOs. So if you uh, if you know how to manage it, that could be. But, you know, so that, there is always uh, pro and yeah, cons. Definitely trade off. Sort of so so it depends on you how you DCA it. If you are happy to leave your coins on an exchange uh, for months. And you can put like one dollar every hour if you want to to do your DCA. Uh, so yeah, it's, so it depends. There is trade off for both, but on, on the long run, as long as you DCA whatever amount and whatever frequency, you're doing you're doing good. Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, so so definitely, there's considerations uh, platform for platform. Different strategies attract different fees. So like I said, like uh, like with my exchange, for example, uh, the one I use. Like there's fees for depositing money, you know, there's fees for, there's fees for everything. But once the money is in the system, it's pretty much do as much as you want, like almost no fees. Uh, So other exchanges, it might be like, you know, buying the actual Bitcoin is a higher fee, but there's unlimited withdrawals or, you know, uh, unlimited deposits. So like, like, uh, 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 as as the the journey always goes, you know, you do your own research, you weigh up your options, like you, you weigh up your competitors, and like uh, you go for the one uh, that's best for you. But I I am liking the direct to cold storage model uh, more and more, or or the or the automatic. Uh, so like some exchanges offer like a, a threshold based withdrawal system. So once you reach you know, point two of a Bitcoin uh, will initiate a withdrawal, you know? Yeah, and that lives up to the principle of not your keys, not your coins, you know, best, I think, right? Because yeah, you're- No, I agree. I re- and I really like it for that for that reason, uh, you know, force people to hold their coins. Right. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, it's very complicated for newcomers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and also I just wanted to come back to your accounting thing about you know buying uh, with a, having an Excel sheet with thousand lines of buys, and is not is that complicated to run the numbers because you do a, a weighted True. average of everything? Yeah, yeah. When yeah. you buy and sell a lot, if you just buy at the end of the yeah, day, it doesn't know, really matter. Yeah, it's just like you you say okay, average weighted, boom, one button, and you get your your average price of buying. It's when you sell and buy and sell a lot that is going to become a nightmare. So, exactly yeah so. and then you know you get in this nightmare of taxes and capital whatever i mean it would be crazy people exposing themselves to this kind of madness um there's something i was ask. yeah the combination you know i used to pe- tell people when my friends like you know ask me how much should i buy you know, on a regular basis uh, like you know just do auto dca maybe you know if you see an, a, on a relative basis a dip you know buy the fucking dip uh, what do you make of that uh, I I'll, let jo- I'll, I'll let Josh go. Uh, so so our, our aim with stacking set is to uh, make Bitcoin easily accessible to people. So that's why we start with 10 euro a day, uh, 10 euro a week or 10 euro a month. Um, the, um, 
Can you reframe, reframe the question for me, please? So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, people always ask me, like, um, uh, when friends, like, ask me how much should they buy on a regular basis yeah. you know, every time. And I'm like, just, you know, relax, just set it up and or buy on a regular basis. And uh, and if you see, like, on a, on, a, on, a t on a relative time scale, how should I call it, like a weekly, uh, monthly, or you see, like, now it dipped, like, what, to 38,000 euros or something, euros at least, I know that, or 39,000, you know, buy a bigger chunk of, of Bitcoin. That's what I'm saying, you know, sort yeah, of the yeah. combination. Yeah, so at the end of the day, it depends on every person because you cannot be an advisor of how you, how you invest your money. So, so for us, so we wanted to do something very low uh, and easy to access with 10 euro from 10 euro um, because we wanted people to just put some leftover money and just, you know, something who doesn't impact the finance. So they have this choice. So after, if you have already some, um, some savings, maybe you want to convert this saving at some point in Bitcoin. So you can, instead of putting your, your salary into Bitcoin, you say, okay, I have this saving. I want to, I have that, I have a thousand bucks. I want to maybe put 500 bucks throughout the year and you calculate uh, your frequency and what, what you do, and you can keep your 500 bucks to uh, buy the dip if you want. So that's, uh, so, so it's, everybody going to have a different answer, depending on how, how risky I think Bitcoin is, what the face they have in Bitcoin, because the person who invests in Bitcoin needs to have face that the price is going to go up, you know? So it depends yeah, on what. Well. So if you want to do like very uh, short-term speculation because you say, oh my God, I'm going to miss a train. I need to buy now, 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 now. You know, your typical FOMO stuff. Uh, maybe you should not put too much money at once and buy the yeah. first dip you see because you're going to see so many dip after and say, oh damn, I, it did 200 bucks lower this time. Damn, I, said, I should have wait. And then you enter this mindset of, oh, I need to wait. And you, you know, you, you want to time the market and you're going to FOMO. So just put the headache out of your head. Exactly, yeah. This year. yeah. And then after if you say, oh, this is the best time to buy and you want to time the market and play a bit of gambling, you know, you put, uh, put or just do a DCA and you say, this is the good price I want to buy Bitcoin, put a order limit and wait for it to happen. You know, that can be another technique as well. Because, you know, you just remove your, 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 your mind of, I need to look at the chart every minute. That, that's, as, especially at the beginning, it's, it's so addictive, you know, for, for when you when you get your first set and you see it move and you say, oh, damn, and you, you want more Mate, and you look at the chart not, again and again and not again. Not just at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. It stays addictive. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, when you go through like a two-year or three-year bear market, at some points you just, yeah, just this year, just don't, you know, you know, there is this meme wherever you, you have like the guy with behind his computer, 49,000, you know, 50,000, yay, 50,001, you know, <laughs> it's okay. We, we know you're going to hit 50,000, you're going to go down, you're going to go up again, and we don't know. And let's see, like, uh, come back in four or five years, and now we're going to look at the price, you know, look at the price every halving. That's okay. <laughs> 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 no, you're so, you're, not, you're so right. I mean, it, you know, it causes so much stress and anxiety and, 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 and really burnout just, just to think of the price constantly. You know, one sat is one sat, one Bitcoin is one Bitcoin, that's act. This is the rule. This is the ultimate, you know, uh, mindset or, or uh, we should all have, you know, like, uh, and it's hard. I mean, because it's constantly, you know, measured in this fiat denominated currency. It's, it's, it's crazy, you know, instead of, you know, just reducing your time preference to the lowest possible and just think, you know, long-term, whether it be five years or 10 years, because we can't even fathom, you know, the purchasing power of every single set. For me, you know, when you reach this, sta this stage of, I don't care of the price, I just this year, you know, you like like the Zen Buddhist who just don't give a shit of what's going on around him and he's just <laughs> quiet, you know? You know it's just at some point you reach... A level where you yep. uh, you're peaceful with it, and you don't really care. It doesn't affect you at all, and you can do your, your regular life. Yeah, the, the Bitcoin. Look, I love the question: How much uh, uh, should I put in? Because, like, uh, for, for me, that question is the start of a of a very deep conversation. Uh, so, for me, like, uh, it depends on what like what you're there for, like, like you want to put money into Bitcoin. Why? 
Like, what's your aim? So different aims uh, will have a have a different like level of investment. Uh, and I hate using that word investment because I don't like treat Bitcoin like a like an investment. Uh, uh, like as you know, I treat Bitcoin literally like a a, a personal a personal uh, religion to me. So I got into Bitcoin uh, for freedom, sovereignty. Uh, ridding the world of corrupt bankers and crooks, uh, ending the robbery of the masses uh, by inflation. And, uh, you know, I've, I've found a religion or I found like a charitable organization uh, whose mission statement is, you know, for the eradication of the Cantillian effect uh, from Earth. That's the, rec- that's the charitable mission of Bitcoin. And to make sure this charity succeeds... I give 20% of what I earn to Bitcoin. Maybe one day it'll give it back to me. Maybe it won't. Uh, but the more people that, you know, religiously commit to this charitable organization to find a cure for the Cantillon effect, uh, it's the, you know, it's the second ever charity where you donate uh, and you can become rich for donating if the charity succeeds uh, towards its aims. Uh, so uh, the Mormons give 20% of their income to the church. I think the Jews have a, a 10% tithe. Uh, the, Mus- uh, the Muslims have 2.5% wealth tax. Anything you own every year, 2.5% of it has got to be like given you know, to charity or the church. Uh, so if you feel that strongly about, you know, Bitcoin and changing the world, don't treat it like an investment, treat it as a charity and then nominate a percentage of your gross income. Uh, so if you make a hundred thousand dollar redos, Aussie dollars a year, uh, that's probably, I don't know, a hundred euros. <laughs> uh, right. If you're super religious, you know, save $20,000 redos a year. If you're not super religious, save five thousand dollar dues uh, uh, a year, and uh, so on and so forth. And really, it only takes like ten million people to think like how I think, and Bitcoin will be a million dollars. Yeah, I've had this. Uh, by the way, you know, I've had this super fascinating conversation. Like it doesn't take many people to buy. You know, chipping in ten bucks a day, fifty bucks a day, but every day, if you've got a million or five million people doing that. Like it becomes irresistible, the amount of fiat flow that comes. It's yeah. like it's not as much as Michael Saylor's one billion. Uh, now, but, this is the question I but want to in, ask. But in 20 days, yeah. it is as much as Michael Saylor's one billion. And then like, and Michael Saylor isn't coming up with a billion every 20 days. He's coming up with one here or there. He has to announce it so people front run him and dump on him. Uh, so he's still learning as well. He should have DCA'd his billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of doing 300 million a day for three days and driving it up to 58,000 and have literal 22 year olds that live in a basement but still happen to have 10,000 bitcoins, mm-hmm. were dumping on Michael Saylor. Uh, but if he was doing 100 million a day over 10 days instead, his average buy would have been in the like high 40,000s and he could have picked up an extra three, 4,000 bitcoins. Uh, because every single day there's 900 new coins that come on the market and need to be bought. Uh, and the day after 58,000, there was no one to buy 900 coins at 58,000. So the price dropped. Uh, during his talk with, uh, with Saif Din, he said, you know, the 900 Bitcoin a day are inconsequential because there's 30,000 Bitcoin a day on Binance. Uh, but what he doesn't know because he's new and what I know because I'm old is those 30,000 coins are the one coin going back and forth 30,000 times a day in a wash trade. Like there is no volume. Like the beast relies on fresh fiat coming in every day through grayscale that comes in consistent every day through square, which comes in consistent through the cash app every day. It's the nice grind. And those billion dollar injections uh, are nice. Uh, but it'll just pump and dump if they keep coming because the inflation needs to be absorbed and uh, it's on the backs of the religious. Uh, uh, if we want you know, Bitcoin to help the poor and bank the unbanked, we need to give them a stable price. Uh, so to do that, we, we have to do that. We have to buy every day.
we have to absorb like the inflation and the excess. Yeah, yeah, no, upward, upward, volati upward volatility is good. Uh, <laughs> like that's not too bad, but it's very important that a floor is created like soon after. Like it's not good for Bitcoin's credibility. Uh, if it were to go up to $500,000 in a few months yeah. and mm. come back down to $80,000, people that bought at 10,000 would still be happy, but it's an absolute horror of a look bitcoin crashes 90 percent again exactly yes yeah uh, God, you so many good why, points that i wanted to so that's refer. why growing the floor through uh -huh. things like auto dca firms a concentration on automatic saving and accumulation as opposed to gambling uh, that's what will bring about hyper bitcoinization the quickest way just everyone just stop participating in fiat and just start just move over don't consider bitcoin an investment just consider yeah. it a migration away from a corrupt system, like into a new system. Uh, and so, so long as enough people uh, learn that there's a, there's a clean system in opposition to the corrupt system, people just like continue to migrate and, and the migration has commenced. Uh, and thanks to like times like this in the market, uh, momentum like really starts to build but having sat through two uh, long bears, like it'd be nice if these noobs didn't have to take an 80% haircut. Like it'd be good if it just, uh, you know, uh, like it's impractical to want it to go up nice, nice and steady, you know, 200% every year forever. Uh, but yeah, we might still be stuck at, you know, plus 1000% some years and minus 30% uh, some others you made some really good points um uh, but i want to yeah just uh, you wanted to say something before yeah, yeah i mean as is very uh, very right i mean everyone who dca i mean the more people who dca there is like a constant buy pressure so you know it's like you know you have this uh, this uh, this memo you have like a big whale you know and a little fish and when you put a lot of little fish together you know they can get the whale you know so that's uh, the power of multiplication of little, like if everyone in the world put like $10 every month to buy Bitcoin, you know, you have this constant buy pressure. And so a well can dip like crazy and you have all these little fish who are just going to keep buying whatever the price it is. So it's just a big, uh, like a, it's a, at the individual scale, it doesn't, change anything but if you put all this in the world together it's just like a constant by pressure and, very uh, numerous yeah exactly that's, that's it <laughs> that's it so it's like like the all the big fish together can bite the big whale and the and the sharks who want to uh, profit and move the move the price and uh, at the beginning you said that you should put like maybe 20 percent of your income in uh, in bitcoin i mean whatever the price it is you put in your dca a few years later, you're going to say, damn, I should have put more. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so it depends on everyone, you know, what's your financial state today? Do you have debt to pay back or no? Do you, do you have like a, a lot of savings or no? Uh, you know, it depends for, for everyone. But as long as you have a bit of Bitcoin and you keep stacking, you're doing good. That, that's yeah. the thing. And you, you don't just, have to compare, to compare to anyone. You don't yeah. compare to sailor or don't compare to... to exactly. To that's is, this is why I tweeted, you know, rise plebs because I know, I know, has, has, you know, you, you, you tweeted us several times on some occasions. You were like, why do we need, I'm just paraphrasing, you know, why do we need institutions uh, if the plebs are just, you know, the general population would just out of stack even $10, $10 or $5 a day we would reach, you know, a certain market capitalization, a certain price. You wanna like, you wanna specify that what you, you what you yeah. meant. You know what I mean? So, so basically, right now, the trading games aside, the net sum, net like the zero sum games aside, every day there are nine hundred new bitcoins that come into existence. They're like Schrodinger's bitcoins. Like we know they're coming, but they don't mean anything until the second that they come. So the second they exist, they have to be assigned a price. So we have, you know, X amount of Bitcoins is, you know, Y market cap. Now we've added 900 Bitcoins. 
like either the market cap stays the same and the price of Bitcoin drops a little uh, or like uh, the market price like uh, goes up and these new Bitcoins are absorbed at their old price. So it's 50,000, 900 Bitcoins come on the market today. $45 million has to come to account uh, for these new coins. So yeah, if you had four and a half million people doing $10 a day, they'll pick up these 45 million. And that's it. You've got a price permanently, 50 grand. That's it. Jeez. That's like nothing. It might, it might punch through, but the next day there's $45 million coming. It'll pick up. And these people aren't buying to sell. They pick up and they're gone forever. Like these coins will be a Bitcoin backed loan against these. The uh, one thing I give the, the big respect to Michael Saylor is the speculative attack and, uh, uh, and like, uh, and using Bitcoin as pristine collateral. So I really do believe if, if you're stacking and saving now, like in three, four years, you will not need to sell. Like you can collateralize your Bitcoin in a loan product. I'm a bit worried about the loan products now. So I wouldn't. So all due respect to like Unchained Cap and what they do and like all, all the other providers, but like I still think Bitcoin could take a 50% hit in a day or two as a hodler i'm happy to hodl that because it's going to come up anyway uh but if i'm in a bitcoin backed loan contract like i could get liquidated like i could be asleep and it happens like sure i'd love to top up my collateral account happy to do it but if it flashes while i'm asleep like it's still too risky but i can see in three four years time when bitcoin is chilling at the six seven eight trillion dollar level uh, it'll still rip 20, 30% in a day either way, but you'll probably never see like 50%. So like March 13th, the COVID crash, it was 60% in two days from 10,000 to 4,000. And then, you know, a week later, it was 7,000 again. Like it's fine, like you can hold through it, but if you're in a contract, uh, in a loan, like... You could get wrecked. So uh, if you're happy to hold for another three, four years, you will never sell Bitcoin in your life ever. You'll get a collateralized loan and just keep refinancing it. So uh, so there's less and less coins going to be sold. The person that's saying, I'm waiting until it's a million so I can sell it and buy my Lambo. Like you just don't sell it to buy the Lambo. You just put collateral up, get some fiat, and like you go waste your money on a Lambo or whatever it is you want to waste your money on. What's your estimated percentage, uh, like on interest, you would you receive? I mean, that would must be worth it. I mean, in in a whatever few years time until you know. So, so not not so. So for me, I would never give up my Bitcoin to earn interest on it. Exactly. That yeah. for me is too risky. Me it doesn't too. make sense. Yeah. Uh, uh, so if I have all twenty one million Bitcoin and I loan you the twenty one million and I want five percent interest, where are you going to get me a million Bitcoin from? Yeah. So that's those those people that are on the give Bitcoin for yield, they're getting wrecked. Like maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but the end game for that is like wreckage. It's the same end game as the fiat system. But until fiat dies, and it will die soon enough, there'll be a little time frame, maybe 10 or 15 years, where we can get fiat uh, with our Bitcoin as collateral. Right now, I think BlockFi charges you 12% interest to get fiat off your Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they if they loan you say 10,000 USD, uh, you owe back uh, $11,200. 11, so quite high interest uh, for, for collateral, which really is quite pristine. It's volatile, but it is quite pristine. I expect interest rates against Bitcoin to come down to maybe three, 4%. And I'd say like major banks, like Deutsche Bank will do the multi-sig custody for your like collateralized loan for 4%. Because like the commercial, uh, Bitcoin isn't here to end the commercial banks. Like the commercial banks will eventually become Bitcoin banks. You keep your Bitcoin at the bank. Uh, we're here to get rid of the central bank. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is a, a huge misconception I think people have. You know, it's not about getting rid of banks or lending or commercial banks. This is about the real power structures of the central banks. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, for so in terms of dangerous for now to uh, land your Bitcoin, I mean, to put your yes. Bitcoin to get a loan. I mean, yeah, once yeah. Bitcoin Look, is yeah. 1 million, that could be fine. Because at 1 million, you can move up and down 10,000 10, bucks in a day. It doesn't make a difference. Yep. Absolutely. Now today, so, you can crash like 50% and go back up. And boom, you're liquidated. And BlockFi can say, oh, what is the liquidation point of all this guy? Okay, let's sell Bitcoin and get more Bitcoin out of it. So it's very dangerous now. I mean, yeah, there absolutely. Is a few, yeah, a few... I, I'd, it's at least what. So do you remember my Bitcoin as a startup framework? Like we're only Series B in Bitcoin right now. Like, uh, you, like, uh, like I would probably only trust like uh, my my money like uh, in like in a loan scheme, like late series C or IPO. So we're probably it's, it's, it's after the next halving. So four years, I'd say yeah, uh, I'd be, I'd be more comfortable like, like doing a big Bitcoin backed loan. Like I'm uh, I've had look and Michael Saylor, like made a, made a great point just about like uh, just bias Like everything you used to know isn't like always true. Like I've been biased by like two big bear markets. So I always have like thinking forward that they're like, there might be a, another rip and a crash. Uh, but it like, it might just be like, ends up being like nothing we've ever seen. And you start seeing like commercial banks doing like Bitcoin back loans uh, because, you know, there was a customer demand uh, for it. Uh, so like, uh, But yeah, for me, because I've been burnt so many times over the past like seven years, like I do not give up my keys. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not uh, look like the, the yield, the, <laughs> the yield on the yield on Bitcoin now. If like, I think if you put up over two and a half Bitcoins with BlockFi, I think they give you 4%. It's not worth return it. in Bitcoin. I'd need 40% to put exactly. my money. Yeah, that's what Preston Fisher said, I think. Yeah. Uh, like, like, yeah, to give up give up your keys, like everything, and like you have to pay tax on all of that. Like it's yeah. just mm. and look, if it was 20% interest, like maybe, maybe I'd put like one percent of my stack in like an interest account if it was giving me 20%. Uh But no, so I not, the returns, not, so I the risk, not, not, not for, not for three percent, four percent. Like, uh, it's, it's still risky, but like, as with all criticisms of Bitcoin, uh, mine included, uh, just give it time, and like, it won't be a criticism anymore. Like, you'll be able to do it safely mm. um, until I'm fiat dies, and then when fiat dies, obviously, what are you going to borrow? <laughs> Uh, against your against your Bitcoin, you'll have to say something else. Yeah, there were several points I, went, I was going to go down the rabbit hole with you guys, but I have to wrap this up because yeah. Um, uh, Josh, do you have any final th thoughts, or did you want to say something before we wrap this up? Just uh, stay on balance stack sets. Okay. <laughs> Good one. Where can people follow you? Uh, mostly on Twitter. I'm not very active anymore on uh, social media or anything. I just, I walk a lot, so <laughs> I don't have so much time to uh, go on Twitter. And because now, back in the day, I was in the North American time zone, so I was able to interact with players and stuff. But now when they're active, I'm already uh, in bed. So so I'm just in the French, uh, in the French Twitter, I would say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've got a question actually. Because you're in France, I'm guessing, uh, what's the payment mechanism? Is it anyone with access to SEPA? Can anyone in yeah. Europe use uh, Stack and Sats? Yeah. Right, anyone in Europe I'll, I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll be adding you guys to the list on the, on yeah. the next update. Yeah. So, I'll put a, so I'll put an EU flag next to your name, not just Thanks. a France uh, flag. So, so the right. thing is, uh, for now, we, you know, we are starting in October and we, uh, we are scaling up. We are scaling up, so we just wanted to start with French-speaking customer for okay. client support. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know if I, uh, there is a German guy coming and say, "Oh, what's up?" You know, we we need to hire people to make customer support yep. for other languages. So that's why we just limit to uh, French-speaking yep. uh, people. But if you're French and you are in in Switzerland or anywhere, like anywhere where the SEPA works, uh, we can uh, we can onboard you. And it's yeah, uh, no, there's, 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 
is it a KYC light sort of? I mean, is it? Yeah, a so of... uh, we uh, we work a lot not to have KYC at the first euro. So you can at the moment you can still on board and not have KYC at the first euro. So you have KYC after the third delivery, or if you reach accumulated amount of thousand bucks, or after ninety days after you first purchase. So that's when you need, you need to do KYC. So we work a lot with our with our lawyers to be able to uh, to add this. And then there is an executive order going to come soon where you're going to say, okay, now it's double identification at the first euro for everybody, everyone who wants to uh, to do any crypto related stuff. Even crypto to crypto, you're going to have to do double KYC. So we are ready to switch to this, but as we work so much to have this feature, we uh, we uh, we keep having now, you can onboard, test, try it out. If you're not happy, you just don't have to onboard and you just you, you just don't continue your, your DCA. That's pretty much it. Gotcha. Boo! You have to continue the DCA no matter what. You got to yeah. start it and you got to stick to it. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we, uh, we want to, uh, our, so our first customer is a, you know, Bitcoin enthusiast to know about, a bit about Bitcoin, but our aim is to be accessible to anyone. So as long for now, as long as you have a Bitcoin wallet and a French uh, or a European account, you can be a customer. Uh, what we want to do is like to onboard our moms, or, or grandma even so uh, we, we we aim for uh, mass and you know to democratize it so that's why we want to be as accessible and okay you can try you know that just you stop and you have a you know so, so, so that's that was our approach but soon we're gonna have to be a KYC from the first year we are just waiting for the executive order to be uh, to be published which is kind of sad but yeah that's that's how we were influenced it's a nightmare regulation here is nightmare already <laughs> Uh, uh, look, look, in, in terms of that, uh, uh, for me, March 13 was judgment day. Uh, the, yeah, so that's effectively for me was the end of the, the fiat system, the death, 0% reserves. So I think uh, uh, we are now at the end of the beginning of hyper-Bitcoinization. Beautifully said. Uh, okay. So, uh, so prepare yourself for the wars to come, yeah, especially yeah. around things like KYC and this and that. This is the we're, we're in the, uh, and then they fight you. So it's the it's the end of the beginning. Uh, at the, at the uh, same time, is the 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 shoot the, themselves in the foot, you know, because they say, okay, so now there is a regulation for Bitcoin. This is this and that. So we just follow the regulation to be able to give Bitcoin to the mass. So now you say, oh, but oh, no, we don't like Bitcoin. We're going to unregulate it. So you, you, so you just, the Pandora box is open now. So, you know, they're bad. Now Bitcoin yeah. is legal somehow. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a, a bad for a good somehow. Right. You just regulate it. But now you have regulated it. So you have accepted it. So you, you cannot go, go back now. I mean, Bitcoin in most countries, there are still countries, you know, where it's still uh, uh, very illegal and uh, that, at some points, they're just going to have to uh, deal with it and deal with it and regulate it. It's regulated, so it's just official out in the open. And they're bad. They just shoot the same in the foot for me. So it's, regulation is bad, but regulation is good as well. <laughs> yeah. eventually, eventually, it'll all, uh, eventually, it'll all go away. Eventually, all of the politicians will be holding Bitcoin and uh, none of them are going to write bad laws for themselves. Uh, the laws will only get friendlier, I feel. So it's not a bad thing if we got a couple of politicians holding uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, the more and more uh, have the game now. You find, uh, you find that no matter what your system of belief and all of that was before Bitcoin, once you're a Bitcoiner, like you are interested in the success of Bitcoin. <laughs> sure. And we are still so hurry. Yeah, we're still so early. Yeah, we're going to yeah. emphasize that. Yeah. So early. Yeah. On a final note, I just wanted, you know, to give a shout out to Economa Alchemist. Maybe we can, you know, continue this talk sometime in the future. Because he did some home mining and did a, you know, real uh, elaborated calculation. I'm sure Hasma Cook can take a look at that. And he did make a profit. Uh, during 31 days of mining so far, he, he received 0 0.01938134 sats rewarded. Yeah. So, so, cost. so that's so that's not a profit uh, yet. Okay, uh, I'm hopeful for him. It is because okay. he paid uh, 2,800 bucks for the rig. Yeah, yeah. So he needs four months of this 
Now, if the hash rate doesn't change for him in four months, he'll break even and start making some money. Mm-hmm. Uh, and look, that might be the case because Antminer isn't shipping S19s until August. And the hash rate, the difficulty is actually going down this fortnight, one and a half percent. So if you can manage to find a rig, I don't know how he managed it. I think he had a local supplier that was able to get him some. Right. You won't be able to get it straight from Antminer until August. Right. So if you can, and you can track down you know, electricity, I think uh, I saw he was getting it for eight cents or nine cents. Uh, in Australia, unfortunately, we pay like 19, 20 cents. So in Australia, it'd probably never be practical uh, for us. Uh, but I think there is a bit of a mining squeeze at the moment in terms of fabrication. Not a lot of rigs out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you can find a rig and get it online, you know, at eight to 10 cents, Yes, there's a there's a discount in it, and it's uh, non KYC. That's the most yeah. and it's non KYC. So it's is, that, is that the thing again with numbers? Because you know your number is very precise. You know it's talk to us. But the thing is, how do you evaluate yeah. a non KYC Bitcoin? You have to put yes. a price on it, and I know people are ready to pay thirty yeah. percent, just to not have a KYC Bitcoin. Would so, it be in an ATM or whatever? You know exactly. So again, the price. So you have these numbers, but how? Do yourself value the fact that you get your Satoshi and KYC mm-hmm. and you can even some people can say, okay, I pay double. I don't want KYC. So maybe problem, in 10 years, you're going to say, oh, I, I just overpay my Bitcoin at the time. But now I'm happy because I don't have KYC on my, yeah, on the, Bitcoin. The, the problem uh, sometimes with home mining, if I were to get myself a couple of rigs and hook them up to the wall, I'd use so much power. Like the authorities might come to my house thinking I've been doing hydroponic yeah. weed growing. <laughs> <laughs> But that you know, the power bill will go through the roof. Yeah, yeah. But you can justify that. So, uh, guys, I'm I'm really sorry. I have to uh, wrap this up because my yeah, my baby's waiting for. Um, we should continue this talk. Really enjoyed this. Uh, are there any final thoughts or links you want to add where people can follow you, Joss? Has? Uh, just check out Surfit Bitcoin if you speak French. Uh, check out Surfit Bitcoin. We are preparing the second edition uh, for end of August in uh, Biarritz. And uh, we are looking for sponsors. So if you're a Bitcoin company and want to sponsor the Bitcoin scene in France, uh, you're happy to contribute to Surfing Bitcoin and to make uh, and to spread the Bitcoin uh, knowledge in a, uh, in French speaking country. So now, yeah. All right, guys. all right. People can people can find me on Twitter at Friar Hass F R I A R H A S S. So uh, keep that stack in hand strong. Uh, and uh, 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 yeah, lo- love yourself, love others, and just <laughs> stack daily. And uh, that's basically how we win. It's as easy as that. And forget the price. Just and forget the price. <laughs> okay. Definitely. Stack that was nice that. talking to you guys. Okay, guys. Talk Thank to you guys. soon. All right. Take care. Take care. Thanks Thank so you. much. Bye. Bye. How'd you like that? Did you love this conversation? I really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, I wish we could have gone deeper, but because of time pressure, I had to, you know, cut it off. Um, we're going to continue this, uh, I'm pretty sure, in the near future. So, you know, the the, the whole, you know, uh, ethical and spiritual and uh, and and uh, principle of of our discussion is, you know, just if you don't want to have headaches, just take your daily medicine. Would it be on an hourly basis, daily, weekly, whatever? Just, you know, auto stack, auto DCA. You, once in a while, yeah, you can buy the, you know, the fucking dip, but um, that's, you know, that's uh, that's the way to go because we're so early into hyper Bitcoinization. Don't think about the price because all it's going to be denominated in, it's going to be the unit account. It's going to be Bitcoin and the purchasing power, as I said in the start, you know, it's going to be unimaginable uh, for every single sat, for every single Satoshi, for every single Bitcoin. So we're still early, but it can go very suddenly, gradually and suddenly as Parker Louis says. So I hope you really enjoyed this. Let me know your comments, your questions, and any other suggestions for panel discussions uh, on, these, on this topic or other related topics. And uh, please give it a like review, uh, five-star review on Apple Podcasts, iTunes. Uh, follow Joss and Has McCook on Twitter. Uh, read has articles it's amazing articles a uh, bunch of you know huge knowledge huge content on on all kinds of fuds bitcoin fuds energy consumption or uh, you know uh, bitcoin as a startup 
So it's really, really mind blowing the content uh, Has McCook puts out. So and and yeah, check out uh, Joss uh, AutoDCA platform. It's called uh, SurfingBitcoin.com, and I'm going to put the other links in the show notes. So thank you so much for your support, and I'll see you soon again. Bye.